Hi everyone, in this video I'll be discussing how I got a 5 in AP Physics 1 by self-study. So I did not take this course in school, my school doesn't offer it. Um, but this video is applicable to you whether or not you are self-studying or are taking this class in school with classmates and with a teacher. So I'll start by going over what materials I use. This is the textbook I use. Um, it says AP edition up here. Um, I also got a hold of the non-AP edition for this one. They're the exact same textbook, so don't worry about getting the AP edition. So it's publisher is Cutno and Johnson, name is Physics, 10th edition. The first 11 chapters of this textbook are AP Physics 1, the rest of them are AP Physics 2. Um, even within the first 11 chapters, there's some like concepts that aren't strictly tested on the AP exam, but I'd still highly recommend you go through everything because it enhances your understanding. I use Princeton Review for the review book. Make sure to get the new newer ones because the exam was recently updated. You don't want to be preparing for the old exam. I recommend Princeton Review over Barron's. I also got the Barron's book for this one. I did not like it at all. So Princeton Review all the way. And Barron's, it just tends to have a lot of silly errors that uh, Princeton Review doesn't. Um, and also, notebook. Now let's talk about study methods. I'd say for any STEM subject, not just for physics, the most important thing is to understand connections. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take math, for example. In math, humans, they started counting, and then they started adding, and then they invented multiplication, and then algebra, then calculus, and then like linear algebra, whatever they're working on nowadays, right? And in physics, it's the same thing. So as an example, in uh, AP Physics 1, towards the end of the curriculum, you'll learn about Bernoulli's equation. Now, Bernoulli's equation, it seems like it's in fluids, and fluids itself seems a little, like, set off from the rest of the units. So if you saw Bernoulli's equation, you might think, well, maybe this is just a standalone equation. But someone who really understands physics and the connections knows that it's actually just the conservation of energy in disguise. Like, it, even though it uses some weird symbols and stuff, it's just the conservation of energy. So these uh, connections are really, really important. And how do you de develop these connections is by asking why. For me personally, I was never satisfied with just knowing an equation or just knowing a concept. Like, I always needed to know what is the most fundamental reason for this to be true. Like, where does this equation come from? And in turn, where does the reasoning for that equation come from? And so on and so on until I get to a root reason. Now, I might have taken it a little too far, but uh, you get the idea, right? And the AP exam, it loves to test you on these things. Like, the free response questions, they don't go easy on you. Like, they don't just test something from one unit. They string together things from multiple units. It is testing you to see how strong your web is. It, they are testing you to make sure that you aren't just a memorizer. Like you can't just memorize all the formulas and all the concepts and all the definitions and expect to do well on the AP exam. They are testing you on how well you can make everything you know work together. Your web of knowledge, connecting all those separate pieces of knowledge. Now, to develop like this, this web, obviously, as I said, you can ask why. And what I'd encourage you to do, and what the textbook I recommended does really well, is to at least look at the derivations of everything. And this, this textbook for most of the major equations, it gives you a derivation. So uh, just take a look at the derivation, think about it, and think, does it make sense to me? Do I now know where it's coming from? As long as you have a general sense of where all the concepts come from, that automatically brings you to the next level of physics and it'll help you do really, really well. And if you want to challenge yourself, you can even derive them yourself. And for the concepts, I think it also explains the textbook. It explains really, really well where the concepts come from. Like it explains to you where friction comes from or something else. Um, I don't have anything off the top of my head, top, top of my head, but this textbook really read it well. Because I think this textbook, it really helps to answer those why questions and therefore deepens your understanding of physics and deepens your, uh, and makes your web of knowledge stronger. And that is what the AP exam tests. 
Now, regarding uh, problems, this textbook has plenty. After every chapter, there's a ton of problems. There's stuff that's labeled with uh, no stars and one star and two stars. Two stars are the hardest. I'd encourage them. And um, of course, there's also the Princeton Review book. It has a lot of questions. Make sure to do all of them because these Princeton Review ones are AP style questions. Um, also, the year I took it, which was uh, the 2024 to 2025 school year, that was the new exam. So there weren't uh, any like real free response questions out yet. So I relied on the course and exam description for AP Physics 1. It had sample uh, free response problems with the grading rubric, exactly how College Board wants the rubrics. So honestly, I would recommend them. By the time that you're watching this, um, the round of free responses that I took uh, for real is probably out and the scoring is probably out and all the commentary, whatever, it's out. So you can take those real problems from last year and try them out. So that's for a free response. For multiple choice, you can also do the CED. The CED for any AP subject is the only place where you can find real College Board questions. Like the Princeton Review has a ton of multiple choice, but they're written by Princeton Review. How do you know if they're like actually College Board standard, right? Um, it's got a limited number, I think like 15 or something, so make sure to use them wisely. But if you want real College Board multiple choice practice, then that is the place to go to. And once you're done with those, then the um, Princeton Review has a ton of them. And just schedule your practice tests regularly. Uh, I didn't do, I actually didn't ever do a practice test, like just from straight. I usually uh, did the multiple choice section first, graded it, and then uh, did one free response at a time and then graded it. Um, so yeah. Now speaking of free responses, like practice free responses, I would say that's the only thing like Barron's is better at is because it gives you a point by point breakdown of um, all the free response questions. So that's a, a plus for that one. But you can also just use a CED if you want uh, to like a point by point breakdown. So those are my tips for AP Physics 1. Uh, it, it is a hard subject, I will say that. Um, but as I said, if you understand those connections, it'll make it so much, so much easier for you. Uh, best of luck to all of you taking this exam next year and in the years to come. And I hope you get a five.